Locking up your bikes is really important, even if you do have somewhere secure to store them, like in your house or in a garage. Now, ground anchors or wall anchors are the best and the safest and the most secure option to use, but they're only useful if you install them correctly and you know how to use them. Now, first things first, you're gonna to need to get yourself a good quality ground anchor. Now, like when you buy any lock for your bicycle, they're, they're sold with ratings to their security. You get a Thatcham rating, which is generally towards motorbikes and stuff, and then you get a sold secure ratings. And I've got a few different examples here, and they're very different as well. So this one here is quite unusual. This one is called an airlock. This actually mounts onto a wall. So this is quite a cool idea if you've got maybe an apartment or something, and you've got a posh bike and you wanna hang it, and it locks securely. Works nicely but that's not what I'm gonna be using today. I'm gonna to be using something a bit more traditional. So, these are more traditional ground anchors that go on the floor. They have a cover over the top of them, so if you fitted one in a garage, for example, you can drive your car over the top of it, no problem. It fundamentally is a plate with a big shackle loop on there, and basically it bolts to the floor and you lock everything to this. Now, where you place your ground anchor or wall anchor is absolutely vital because it adds additional security. Now, there's a big school of thought that says by mounting them on the wall, you're gonna make it even harder for a thief to get to because you can mount it on the wall, say, that back wall there. Likewise, although this is designed, and many of them are designed so you can drive over them if you had them on the floor in your garage, um, putting in the middle of the floor means it's technically a bit of a weak point as well. So you wanna make sure that whatever you're using this for, it could be for a motorbike, it could be for bicycles, you try and position it in a place that is the hardest angle to get any work on for a would-be attacker. So what I'm gonna do is mount it underneath here, quite close to the wall behind me, because then I can daisy chain all of my bikes together and I can drop another chain down to it. So effectively, they're all locked together and they're all locked to the ground. Um, pretty much the safest position it can be in. Just think about it when you mount them. Now you can mount these to various different surfaces. You could put them in the back of a van, that'd be a great idea, but of course that means putting a big bolt through the van uh, to do that. In this case, I'm mounting to a concrete floor, which gives you two options. And there's also different recommendations depending on which brand you buy. There's several on the market, so do a bit of homework for that. So this one uses proper concrete fixings. Now I have a solid concrete base under here, so that is absolutely fine for it. However, if you don't have a solid concrete base or maybe you've put in some, some sort of filler or something like that, putting these fixings in is not a good idea because it can damage the concrete and they can weaken the mount. The idea is that these are a permanent fixing. So once they're in, fit and forget until you actually have to dig the ground up to get them out. So the other option available to you if you haven't got a proper solid concrete base is a chemical or a resin fixing. So that involves still drilling the same sort of hole to take one of these fixings, but instead of the fixing basically grabbing onto the concrete and expanding, you actually fill that hole with a resin mix. It's a special chemical bonding agent, basically, and that makes for an extremely good fit. And you can screw into that and it will not damage the concrete or whatever it is you're screwing into, and it will give you just equally as permanent a bond. But for today, I'm using the traditional ones straight into the concrete. Now, depending on which ground anchor you have, you're gonna need a few tools for the job. So first up, you're gonna want some protective eyewear because bits of concrete can go flying everywhere. Uh, you're gonna need some drill bits. Depending on what sort of drill you have, I've got an SDS plus drill, so I'm using SDS 16 and eight mil bits. Eight mil to drill the pilot hole and 16 to drill the bigger hole. You're also gonna need a hammer and you're gonna need a really good drill. Now, what I mean by that is not a cordless drill. You want a proper plug-in option um, because basically you've got a lot more welly for really getting into that concrete. It's gonna make the job a lot easier. Uh, I've got an STS Plus drill. It's gonna make light work of getting into there. Now, something to factor in is depending on where you're working, it could be quite loud, so you may want some ear defenders. So there's a few steps to the process here. Um, first is identifying where you're gonna put your anchor. This is where I've marked mine out on the ground. I've actually marked around with a knife because on top of my concrete floor, I have this uh, heavy duty rubber flooring. I actually wanna peel away a section so this sits completely flush on the floor just so it can be as secure as possible. And I actually did this a minute ago, but, uh, but there we go, I won't be needing that. That is gonna sit, sit there, it's gonna sit flush on the ground. Okay, so I'm in position, there's three holes. We're gonna do one at a time to make sure it lines up correctly. First up is just to mark the pilot hole using the smaller drill bit. So 
Time for the second hole. Let's change those bits on there. So this is the bigger hole ready to accept the plug. It's absolutely vital that you get the dust out of the hole, otherwise there's a chance that the plug won't grip properly. So make sure you take your time doing this. There's no rush. Okay, so with the hole clean, you wanna get the first plug into place. It's snug, but it should go in okay. You may need to tap it. In this case, I haven't needed to. Just gonna remove the, the Allen bolt from there. I'm gonna line this up into the hole. So I know exactly where the others need to be now. So I'm gonna do my pilot holes for number two, then the bigger hole, and then I'm just gonna check it lines up before doing the final hole, just to make sure they're in exactly the right place. Now, clean that one out, the last bit into place in the hole. Sometimes you need to just check there in okay. Okay, so now it's time to tighten the bolts up and make sure that they uh, pull the anchor plate onto the ground. There you go, I can feel that pulling now. Just wanna make sure that I'm applying equal pressure to all of them. You really wanna tighten these things up so it really pulls the, the plugs into the concrete to hold it in place. Now that's in place, but to further secure it, because you can obviously still see the exposed Allen bolts, Allen heads even. I'm actually gonna hammer in ball bearings into the top of these. That means you cannot get them out again. Solid, that is not going anywhere. Uh, finally, I can just put the top cover in place. Doesn't really do a lot. It's more there just to make sure you, if you've got a car or anything you can drive over, but still it's an additional layer to prevent it being tampered with. And this just bolts into place with the supplied Allen bolts. And then our ground anchor is in position. There we go. There's our ground anchor ready for use. So now we've got our secure ground anchor in place, it's all about how you lock your bikes together. As you can see, I've got a fleet of bikes here. Uh, they're all my work bikes, and I like to lock each bike to each other, and then I'm gonna lock that successive chain of bikes to the ground anchor using a big chain. Now, whilst D-type locks are really, really strong, and they're great for when you're out and about because they're a bit more convenient to store on the bike or perhaps in a bag, you may as well take advantage of using big, heavy-duty chains when you're at home because they don't have to go anywhere. You can get some seriously heavy duty chains and use them accordingly. But something that's really important to say is bearing in mind that we're in an indoor location here. So nothing is unbreakable. You can break U-type locks or D-type locks using bottle jacks. You can even get through them with angle grinders. It's all about how much time and how much noise it takes to get through them. So you wanna make it as difficult as possible for a would-be attacker to get to your bike. So if you've got a chain on the floor, for example, you're gonna be able to apply leverage with bolt croppers to do that. So you really don't wanna have any excess of locks on the floor. You wanna keep it all off the ground as much as possible and it makes it much harder to work on them. Now, heavy duty chain locks are definitely the best for this type of job, but you might also wanna have a cable extension lock. So I'm gonna chain all my bikes together and chain them to the ground, but because I've also got wheels and various other things, I'm gonna run this through the chains basically and through all of the wheels so everything is locked together to make it as hard as possible. And I've got various locks here and it's gonna be pretty secure. The final thing, just a reminder, is if you're buying new locks for something like this, make sure that you register the keys, make sure you split the keys up so you've got a bunch of keys with single keys for each successive lock that you use and you keep those together and you keep your spare keys somewhere completely separate and somewhere safe. Keep them registered because insurance companies do like to know this sort of stuff uh, and as always be careful with your bikes and your belongings. Well, there you go, that fundamentally is how you install a ground anchor. Um, and hopefully you've had some advice on how to chain your bikes up 
using one to maximize that security. We've got a few more security videos coming soon on GMBN Tech with far more information about stuff like CCTV, bike locking up stuff, uh, locking your bike up in public. So keep an eye out for those videos. In the meantime, for a couple more videos, click up here if you want to see Blake Sampson's Mega Bike Check. That is his Scout Hardtail that he raced the Mega Avalanche on. And click down here if you want to see how to look after your bike and wash your bike if you live in an apartment. As always, don't forget to give us a huge thumbs up here at GMBN Tech. And if you like the content, don't forget to share and subscribe. Cheers, guys.